This one is a data sufficiency question in algebra. A lovely question, easy one, but basically helps us understand the core of how equations work, especially in a data sufficiency context. Many students have got this question incorrect without understanding some very fundamental stuff. Let's get started. This is a 650 level GMAT question, not a very difficult one in that sense. What we need to answer is, is y equal to 3? We've been given two statements. Right. It's an is question. For any is question, the answer will be an yes or a no. If you're able to answer conclusively that y is a 3 and it is no other value other than 3, then we'll answer it with an yes. The data would be sufficient. Conversely, if you're able to establish that y is anything other than 3, y could be a 3.9, y could be a 14.2, y could be something, but it can never be a 3 if you can establish that as well, then we'll say the answer is no and the data would be sufficient. If by using the information in the statements, either one, two or together, if we come up with an answer saying that y could be a 3, y need not be a 3, I'm not sure, I'm not able to conclusively give you an answer, then the data is not sufficient, right? So you've got clarity on how this works. Let's get started with statement 1. Statement 1 tells us that y minus 3 into x minus 4 equals 0. I'm going to look at it two ways. One, let's do the counter example, which I'll do it subsequently. What do you mean by y minus 3 into x minus 4 equals 0? More often than not, we are tempted to say, hey, this would mean that y equals 3 and x equals 4. Is it y equals 3 and x equals 4 or is only one of these two sufficient? We have an expression, let's call this as a and another expression b. The product of these two expressions equals 0. What would that mean? It could mean that y minus 3 alone could be 0 and x minus 4 need not be 0. Product of two terms is 0 when at least one of the terms is 0. So y minus 3 equals 0, x minus 4 is not equal to 0, which is one possibility. Second possibility is y minus 3 is not equal to 0 and x minus 4 equals 0. In this case too, the product will be a 0. The third possibility is y minus 3 equals 0 and x minus 4 equals 0. What would this mean? y is equal to 3. What would this mean? y is not equal to 3. So from this we realize that if y minus 3 times x minus 4 equals 0, y could be a 3 and this could hold good. y need not be a 3 and still this could hold good, which essentially means that from statement 1, we don't have a unique answer. We are not able to conclusively answer with an yes or a no. What we would have said is, if y minus 3 and x minus 4 equals 0, we would have said y is a 3. Please don't fall for this trap. An alternative way to approach the same thing is with a counter example. Let's look at it. Let's take x to be equal to a 4 and y to be equal to a 3, right? In this case, is a product equal to 0? Yes. And what is the answer to the question? y equals 3. Let's look at one more case. x equals 4, y equals 5. Will this equation hold good? 5 minus 3 is a 2 into 4 minus 4 is a 0, which is equal to 0. So the statement holds good for x equals 4 and y equals 5. Is y a 3 in this case? y is not a 3. So sometimes yes, sometimes no. The second way to approach the same statement. So net net statement 1 has not given us a conclusive answer. Statement 1 alone is not sufficient. Can we narrow down our answer choices? If 1 alone is not sufficient, we can rule out choices A and D. Our answer choices narrow down to B, C or E. Let's summarize at this stage with statement 1 before we move on to evaluating statement 2 alone. Y minus 3 into X minus 4 equals 0. What does this mean? Y minus 3 equals 0 or X minus 4 alone is equal to 0 or both these numbers are 0. Translates to y equals 3 or x equals 4 or that both y equals 3 and x equals 4. When we say y equals 3 or x equals 4, in this instance, y need not be a 3 is what is the implied thing. We also looked at a counter example to check this out. So when x is equal to 4, y equals 5, this information holds good. Is y a 3? Answer is no. When x equals 4, y equals 3, this statement still holds good. This equation still holds good. In this case, is y a 3? The answer is yes. So using counter example or using this argument, we've established that we're not getting a unique answer with statement 1. Statement 1 alone is not sufficient. Rule out choices A and D. We're down to B, C or E. Let's look at statement 2 alone. x minus 4 equals 0, which means x equals 4. This question is about y. The information given from statement 2 is only about x. We know nothing about y from the statement. So statement 2 alone is not sufficient. It's quite easy to eliminate the statement. 2 alone is not sufficient. At the end of evaluating statement 1, our answer choices were down to B, C or E. 2 is not sufficient. Eliminate choice B, we are down to C or E. 
all that is left is to combine that evaluate the statements together and check whether it is c or e so evaluate them together x minus 4 equals 0 from statement 2 so we know that x is equal to 4 from statement 1 we know y minus 3 into x minus 4 equals 0 so let's plug in this x equal to 4 in this so y could be i'm using a counter example let's go with it right x equals 4 is established from statement 2 this is from statement 2 I'm taking y to be equal to a 3. Let's check out whether statement 1 holds good. Yes, certainly holds good. So x equals 4, y equals 3. Both statements will hold good. The answer to our question is an S. Is y a 3? Yes, is the answer. Will this hold good for x equals 4 and y equals 5? x equals 4 comes from statement 2. That's holding good. If I plug in x as a 4 here, this part becomes 0. 0 into anything is a 0. So y minus y could be a 5, y could be a 7. It doesn't matter. In this case, is y a 3? The answer is a no. Despite combining the two statements, we don't have a conclusive answer to the question. Statements together are not sufficient. What is the answer? We were down to C or E after evaluating statement 2. Together they are not sufficient. E is the answer. Summarize it in a printed form. x equals 4 is what we got from statement 2. We are taking x equals 4, checking with a case where y is not a 3. And we seem to have both these statements holding good there. So answer is no. When x is a 4 from statement 2, if y is a 3, both these statements still hold good. What is the answer to the question? Is y equal to 3? In this case, yes is the answer. Despite combining the two statements, we don't have a conclusive answer. If we're down to C or E, eliminate choice C. Choice E is the answer to this question. Before you leave, do two things. One, sign up as a trial user at wzkwo.in slash core. It's a most comprehensive and affordable GMAT online course for quant. It takes all of three minutes and three steps to get started with your online GMAT preparation. Start with statistics and average, it's a free topic. Take you about three, four days to complete this topic to get momentum into your preparation. Use this topic to get used to the teaching methodology UI UX. Once you have completed this topic, convert this trial user into a paid user and get access to the remaining 18 topics. Lastly, subscribe to this channel youtube.com slash and spread the word among your friends who are preparing for the GMAT.